This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. At this point all the players are in place. Freddie Blackwell is straddling the lunch and service counters, determined to get the perfect photograph to show his Jackson Daily News audience exactly what they are missing. He points his camera, checks his flash, frames the action, and shoots. What we see in the result is a barrage of stories, individual stories, group stories, woven together to make a unique tapestry about race and resolve in a southern town. D.C. Sullivan's friends, for instance, were encouraging him to do something about Salter. Sullivan is not, in fact, looking at the camera. Rather, he is staring at Salter with a mixture of rage and incomprehension. Dragging on his Winston cigarette, Sullivan is trying to take it all in and wondering what he should do about it. Sullivan's best friend, Joe Johnston, with a shock of hair hanging down his forehead, stands on tiptoe trying to look over the crowd at the other demonstrators on the other side of the counter. Jimmy Madden stands next to Sullivan, just looking at him, perhaps suggesting that he and Sullivan go take Salter out. An unidentified classmate next to Madden tries to cop a hit from Sullivan's cigarette. Roger Scott, another Central High student, sits only a few stools away from Annie Moody and watches as another kid from Central High pours more sugar down the back of Joan Trumpauer's neck. Two FBI agents in dark glasses stand behind Scott, watching carefully so that later they can write reports on the incident, but in line with federal policy, they take no action to stop the riot. Across the room in the upper left of the photo, Red Heydrich looks over the melee, seeming a bit pleased at the scene before him. He is the patriarch in the picture. His generation will not go quietly. He will allow no change to the established order, will gladly inflame youthful hysteria to try to ensure that life will continue as they all have known it. Just in front of Heydrich stands a young man who looks bewildered. Hands by his side, he seems quizzical, wondering perhaps how he got there. His name is Smitty, and he happened on the scene quite by accident while delivering frozen french fries on Capitol Street for his new business venture, Smitty Spuds. Woolworth's was one of his scheduled stops, but he had no idea what he was walking into. After arriving, he stayed around because he couldn't believe what he was seeing. Although he took no part in the riot, his sympathies ran strongly with the crowd, not the demonstrators. I was mad as hell at what they were doing, he said, sitting there and all. They had no right. In the photograph, he looks hypnotized by what he is witnessing. At the end of the counter to the right slumps a lone middle-aged man. He is a cameraman taking a break from filming the action. Behind him stand several more Central High students, elevated on some Woolworth's display to get a better view of the entire scene. At the forefront, holding their own, sit three combat-weary veterans of so many past and future battles, wondering if they will get out of this one alive. Whether they believed in nonviolence as a way of life, as did Trumpauer, or only as a tactic, as did Salter, or whether they knew to fight back was pointless, as did Moody. All three used the only weapon left to them, their vulnerable humanity, to tell the world that this insanity had to stop. The moment passed, and the riot continued.